Welcome back to Harville. A Reagan appointed judge ruled today the other day that the entire Obama health care law is unconstitutional. He did it yesterday. A White House advisor called it an example, it being an example of judicial activism. So now we've got two federal judges appointed uh, upholding the law, and we've got two appointed by Republican presidents opposing it. So we've got a partisan split in the court, and it looks like the Supreme Court's going to have to decide this just in time. Guess what? For next year's presidential election. Joining me right now is Virginia Congressman Jim Moran and California Congresswoman Laura Richardson. Congresswoman, I want to start with you on this. You know, the American people have a hard time believing we have an independent ju judiciary when you've got this even split. Hey, guess what? The two Democratic appointed judges are with the president. Guess what? The two Republican appointed judges are against them. Is this partisan judicial behavior on all sides? Well, Chris, first of all, thanks for having me. And the fact that you mentioned it's lo and behold right in Florida causes us to have question. Not only is this judicial activism, it's overreaching, and it doesn't even meet the mainstream test. Not to follow precedents by Supreme Court law and not to do a true analysis to cut out an entire bill based upon one provision is way out of bounds, even for Republicans. What did you make of the charge that it, you can't use the Interstate Commerce Clause to cover all activity and non-activity? You can't punish a person with taxation for not buying health insurance when there's no commerce there. The person's not buying anything. How can you say that they're included in commerce? What do you think of that argument by the judge? Well, I think it's pretty weak. All you have to look at is in 2009 alone, $43 billion it costs many taxpayers to pay for people who hadn't paid for the insurance themselves. If that's not what commerce is, I don't know what you would call it. We have a long-standing history of being able to utilize legislation based upon the Commerce Clause, and this is no exception. Come to my hospitals. We've got hospitals open having to care for people because they haven't done the preventative care themselves. Well, you've sold me. I want to go back to Congressman Moran on that same question. It seems to me if a person's willing to walk around with a sign that says, if I'm in a traffic accident, if I have a heart attack, if I have an appendicitis attack, leave me alone and let me die, because I don't want to be part of interstate commerce. I mean, I know that's ludicrous, but what about her? What's your argument for why this is constitutional, if you have one? Well, clearly, we have determined that we are going to provide health care uh, when needed, even to people who don't have insurance coverage. That means that all of us have to pay it those of us who have insurance coverage. It's reflected in hospital bills, it's reflected in insurance premiums, it's reflected in property taxes because many localities pick it up. Doesn't it appall the American people that once again we're gonna have a Supreme Court decision which seems like the only independent vote is that of Judge Kennedy? Well, it's unfortunate because we would have all thought we have come much further, but I'm going to actually hold out for a little better hope. If you look at even President Reagan's Solicitor General, Mr. Fried, had said that there was no hope of, of really basing this decision on any constitutional argument. So I think they're way off base this time. We're going to hold true to Kennedy. Is going to look at the key points of what Supreme Court justices view precedence and analysis, and in this test, it doesn't hit on either bounds.